Hey, here we are at the Cold War Air Museum, which is on Lancaster Airport, just outside of Dallas, Texas. And we're going to show you around our MiG-23 today. We've got a, about 20 aircraft at the museum. We've got a couple of uh, Mi-24 Hind helicopters and Mi-2 helicopters, MiG-21, MiG-23, which are 39s, 29s, various stuff. But right now, we're going to show you the MiG-23. started a blog on this when we started putting it together this month, and we got so much attention that we thought we'd shoot some video and then put it up on YouTube because it's such a cool way to share. This aircraft's the MiG-23UB. U is the Russian word for trainer, so it's got two seats. The instructor sits in the back, the student sits in the front, and uh, that's how you learn to fly this aircraft. This one was built in 1976. It belonged to Bulgaria. We've gotten most of our stuff from Bulgaria. We've got a good relationship with the people there. And uh, this one we picked up about two years ago. It sat around the hangar like a giant Ravel model until we decided that uh, we had all the ground equipment and the people and everything necessary to put it together. So I'd just like to show you some of the features of the MiG-23 and uh, we'll just start at the front and kind of work our way back. This one has a, a particularly large, MiG-23 has got a very large nose. Normally the uh, aircraft would have a giant radar in it. This one's been modified, it just has a big lead weight, takes the place of the radar. And uh, so that's the weight and balance already been worked out for us by the Bulgarians. We've got giant intakes. All right. Reminiscent of an F-4, it's a variable ramp intake, changes the geometry as the aircraft goes supersonic to modify the airflow into the engine. Coming back, one of the interesting things, you can see this aircraft isn't quite put together yet, but one of the interesting things about the MiG-23, of course, is the fact that it's a swing wing, pivots here on one giant 165 millimeter bolt which is about this big, this big around, so heavy you can barely lift it. Aircraft pivots between 16 degrees for takeoff and landing, 45 degrees for maneuvering, and then all the way back to 72 degrees for going supersonic. This aircraft will go Mach 2.35, which is almost 1,500 miles an hour. A lot of kids come to the museum, they say, how fast is it, how fast is it? The answer is, it could go from Dallas to Houston in nine minutes. So, I pointed out the, uh, the wing bolt here, the other thing this aircraft has, this has the C model wings, which gives you this dog tooth up here. The dog tooth produces a uh, kind of spiral effect on the air, which uniformly loads the, uh, the leading edge, gives you a little bit better bite into the, uh, into the air, lets you go a little higher angle of attack. This is one of my favorite parts of the MiG-23, the landing gear system. There's a massive landing gear system for landing this 28,000 pound aircraft on dirt strip, giant shock absorbers giant connectors, giant cylinders. The coolest part of all, that all this stuff packs up into this little itty bitty space, including the wheel. It all closes up, and all that's left is just this little bump outside the airplane for supersonic flight. Back here we still have the engine compartment opened up. Engine starts uh, about in here, runs all the way back to about here, afterburner sections back here and it's got a giant tailpipe. This is an R27 F2M engine, produces 10,000 uh, metric tons, which is about 22,000 pounds of thrust in reheat, burning about two gallons a second when it's all the way in burner. So here we are at the business end of the MiG-23. The tail cone's off so you can see the turkey feathers, which are a series of plates and the hydraulic constriction mechanism that either makes it small or large to control the, the area, the cross-sectional area of the, uh, the exhaust nozzle. The back end of the engine are a series of little straws that have a little pinhole in the end. It produces a mist of uh, fuel, which is then ignited, just like a rocket engine, and comes out the back. This aircraft produces about 22,000 pounds of thrust which is pretty good in a 28,000 pound airplane. If you were to actually stand anywhere within about a 25 degree cone of the tail within say 100 yards of it, it would almost be hard to breathe because the, the aircraft produces so much vibration, sound, and there's just so much energy coming out of the back of the airplane. This aircraft doesn't really have a computer that does all the work for it like a, a really modern aircraft has, but it's got a, some uh, kind of analog computers that will adjust which things happen at what time and above what speed. For example, the uh, ailerons stop working uh, above Mach speed on, on the aircraft or when the wings are swept back and we go to just using 
these giant stabilators to roll the aircraft. We spent about a month putting this aircraft together. It was in a bunch of giant pieces. Basically each wing was on the floor. The uh, fuselage was already on the gear, came that way in an uh, open top shipping container. Stabilators were in their uh, kind of their own frames. The tail was in its own frame. So uh, as we put on the blog, we, we kind of put each piece together and fit it together and tested it. And all the connections seemed to make sense and we moved on to the next step and the next step, kind of working through what we found in the book and uh, we had some mechanics helping us that uh, know what they're doing. And we got some people back in Poland who basically have, uh, I guess they've been kind of assembling this aircraft over the phone because we'll call them every time we get stuck and they'll say, well, of course you're stuck, that's the hard part. So uh, then they'll tell us how to get past the hard part and we'll move on to the next part. Come on up to the front and I'll show you the cockpit of the aircraft. All right, let's uh, go up the cockpit, we'll open it up and take a look inside. One of the interesting things about the, this MiG and uh, most Soviet aircraft is the use of pneumatics. They like to use air for uh, all sorts of stuff. But this aircraft not only uses pneumatics for the canopy seal, the head pressure on the hydraulic system, but also for the brakes and for the, uh, for the canopies. Two positions. First one lets uh, whatever heat you're getting in the cockpit from the, the sun out when you're taxiing in or out. And then all the way back, takes it all the way up. So, uh, just walk you around the cockpit uh, as I'm learning it myself from the book. The, uh, here's the handle that uh, adjusts the sweep of the wings, 72, 45, 16. That's manually adjusted by the pilot. Doesn't, uh, doesn't do it for you, you have to actually hit the, hit the lever. Here's the throttle. This is, a flight up, this is idle all the way up to max power and then beyond max power we pull back the lever minimum afterburner and then all the way up to maximum afterburner back. landing gear the usual stuff oxygen indicator here's the Mach meter kind of like the fact that it goes all the way up to Mach 3 although this aircraft like I said only goes to about 2.35 altimeter we'll have to have this replaced FA is going to want us to have it in feet airspeed indicator we can actually keep in uh, kilometers per hour. It's tied into some of the uh, autopilot stuff so that's going to work out for us. Here's a Soviet attitude indicator. This is really nice. It's uh, fully articulated. You can be upside down. It'll never never tumble. This one has command bars in it for uh, the uh, flight director. Here's the uh, Soviet RSBN system which is uh, kind of a combination long distance ILS navigation and a homing device. Very interesting. Uh, Soviets like to combine things. Here's a combination turn indicator and uh, climb uh, vertical speed indicator. Radar altimeter, DME, and then the clock. The Russians put one of these clocks in everything they build all the way from their, uh, their piston trainers all the way up to the Russian space shuttle has almost the same clock. There's a short PhD course in how to operate the clock because there's a bunch of functions even though it's only got two buttons. That's the museum's MiG-23. If you'd like to keep up with us, visit the website and uh, go to the blog. We'll be posting more pictures and uh, developments as, as they occur. And uh, leave us some feedback. Come on out to the museum. We're, uh, we're here weekends, pretty much the whole weekend. But, uh, Official tour hours are 10 to 4 on Saturdays. You'll find somebody here. And thank you for watching.